Thank you very much for the privilege of uh, the floor. I'm going to talk about endovascular modalities for early thrombus removal. Uh, the roots of early thrombus removal come from the Scandinavian work <clears throat> in the early 80s. They used to do a surgical thrombectomy for iliac vein thrombosis, and they had 10 years follow-up on their patients. And they showed that uh, early venous thrombectomy using surgical means would cause significant reduction in post-thrombotic syndrome. Then came systemic thrombolysis during which the thrombolytic agent was injected into a peripheral vein for the treatment of proximal DVT. This is a review by Dr. Komorata, which showed that there is significant clot lysis in the thrombolytic group as compared to the anticoagulation group. However, this came at the heavy price of fourfold increase in significant hemorrhage. Systemic thrombolysis was therefore abundant for the sake of catheter-directed thrombolysis. During catheter-directed thrombolysis, the thrombolytic agent is injected inside the thrombus using a catheter that's positioned within the thrombus. It came with the premise of more efficient lysis, reduction of the dose of thrombolytic therapy, reduction of the time, reduction of systemic effect, and therefore reduction of the hemorrhagic complications. These are the early publications of catheter-directed thrombolysis, which were published in the late 90s, and they showed very reasonable initial success and very acceptable primary patency at one year. And since then, catheter-directed thrombolysis has become one of the established options for the, for the treatment of proximal DVT. This is an example of catheter-directed thrombolysis, a young lady who presented with thrombosis of the iliac vein, of the common iliac vein and external iliac vein. She was treated by catheter-directed thrombolysis, which uh, revealed a proximal left common iliac vein near occlusion, it was a May Turner syndrome, it was treated by balloon angioplasty, which was not adequate, and then she had a stent uh, with excellent result. This procedure was performed in 2014. This lady became pregnant twice since, and she's still under follow-up with a patent stent and no symptoms whatsoever. It's an example of how durable this procedure can be if performed with the correct indication and properly. Now, what are the results of catheter-directed thrombolysis? This is a meta-analysis, which included 17 RCTs, which compared thromboly thrombolysis versus anticoagulation. And it shows advantage toward the thrombolytic uh, therapy uh, if compared with anticoagulation in terms of any early venous patency. <clears throat> also, there is more clot lysis in the thrombolytic group as compared to the anticoagulation group. However, there are more bleeding complications in the thrombolytic group as compared to the anticoagulation group. There was no difference in mortality, and remarkably, there was no difference in pulmonary embolism between the two groups. Pharmacomechanical thrombolysis, by which a mechanical method is used in addition or without a thrombolytic agent. There are many ways where a mechanical thrombectomy could be performed, uh, uh, the, it, it came with the premise of further reduction of the dose of the lytic therapy, further reduction of the duration of the thrombolytic therapy, and reduction of the hemorrhagic complications. It could be performed in its most basic form using percutaneous manual aspiration of the thrombus or computer-assisted mechanical aspiration, the penumbra device, the aerolytic system, the angiojet, the rotation at the uh, thrombectomy, Aspirex, or the ultrasound accelerated thrombolysis. These are the most commonly performed uh, methods. However, there are 32 uh, percutaneous mechanical devices that are available to us in various parts of the world. And in the next few slides, I'm going to take you through the most commonly used of those. The first one is the manual aspiration of thrombus. Uh, this is a very basic technique, and you can see here uh, my dear friend Malay Patel of India performing the procedure. And this is the image you see on fluoroscopy, the caster going up and down the thrombus, uh, in the meanwhile aspirating the thrombus, and it goes up uh, until the operator reaches uh, uh, the result that he requires. Many, there, is not, there, are not manual, there are not many publications regarding manual aspiration of thrombus. This is maybe the most important one, and it's a review of eight studies and three case reports, 
and the author came to the conclusion that satisfactory results with prompt improvement could be obtained in the majority of symptoms in the majority of patients. However, uh, there are no numbers to support this conclusion. I would like to share with you this. This is the computer-assisted mechanical aspiration device, the penumbra device. Uh, it's, a, it's a pump that aspirates the clot. Uh, and when the caster is inside the clot, it aspirates. When the caster is in a patent vein, it will stop aspirating automatically and therefore uh, reducing the uh, blood loss. Uh, it also has a little uh, separator that's, uh, that looks like a little Fogarty caster that if you withdraw it inside the caster, it helps removing the thrombus. And here is the procedure. It starts with an IVC filter and then a venogram is obtained to identify the clot. In this particular case, the clot is an iliac vein thrombus. It's an occluded stent. And the device is uh, introduced inside the thrombus uh, together with the separator. And here is the movement of the separator in and out of the caster and the movement of the caster to aspirate the thrombus. Venogram is obtained and the procedure continues until the final result is achieved. This is another example of atherectomy devices. It's a rotational thrombectomy, the Aspirex. It rotates very rapidly, and during the rotation, it, it will aspirate, fragment, and transport the clot. This is the Aspirex um, in action, uh, and six French feet is placed, and then a venogram, and this is replaced by an 11 French sheath, and this is the pump. And then the Aspirex uh, caster is introduced inside the vein and pushed up inside the clot. Uh, the, clot, the clot is aspirated through the pump, and this procedure usually ends up with a stent. And this is the final result. Angiogetriolytic system, uh, heparinized saline is injected. It produces a vortex current, uh, which uh, sucks out the thrombus. And finally, the ECUS, accelerated, uh, sorry, ultrasound accelerated caster directed thrombolysis. It's a catheter which produces high frequency, low energy ultrasound, which fragments the fibrin clot and therefore improves the function of the thrombolytic agent. Now, what are the, are the results of the pharmacomechanical thrombolysis as compared to straightforward caster directed thrombolysis? This is a large meta analysis which comprised 17 studies, 1400 patients. Uh, and these are the results. In terms of successful thrombol thrombolysis, both groups, the pharmacomechanical and the caster directed thrombolysis, were actually equal. There was an advantage towards primary patency in the pharmacomechanical thrombolysis as compared to the caster directed thrombolysis. There were more bleeding in the caster directed thrombolysis as compared to the pharmacomechanical thrombolysis. There was no difference in terms of post thrombotic syndrome. Now, what do we come out of this? Uh, pharmacomechanical thrombolysis, as compared to catheter-directed thrombolysis, you'd expect a reduced dose of lytic therapy, reduced time, and reduced hemorrhagic complications. But this comes at the extra cost of the device, which are quite expensive, the extra cost of using an IVC filter, which is required in the majority of those patients, and of course, the extra cost, the extra cost of the second procedure for filter removal. And I'd like to finish with these uh, images. This is the final result of a patient who had pharmacomechanical thrombolysis. This is the final result of a patient who had caster-directed thrombolysis. Uh, if, you, if you end up uh, like this one, the first one, uh, you're sure uh, to have early rethrombosis or late restenosis. Uh, the, the difference is complete clot lysis. And my take-home message is whether caster-directed thrombolysis or any of the mechanical methods are used, or probably a combination of both, the most important is to reach complete clot, clot lysis. This is the key to an acceptable long-term result. Thank you.